The power of saying no. Why being too nice is not always a virtue. Are you someone who's constantly nodding in agreement to please others, even if it comes at the cost of your own well-being? It's a common tendency in our society to prioritize kindness and helpfulness, but what happens when this outlook morphs into an excessive urge to please everyone? In this video, we'll delve into the detrimental effects and dangers of being too nice, particularly in relation to our mental health. But that's not all. We'll also explore how setting boundaries and learning to say no can become a powerful tool for personal growth and recovery. So if you're ready to learn the gentle art of saying no and break free from people pleasing, let's get started. Many of us have been taught to be polite, accommodating and considerate people to avoid conflict at all costs. We often say yes to things we don't want to do or don't have time for, simply because we don't want to disappoint or upset others. While being kind and considerate is important, always saying yes and being too nice can have negative consequences on our mental and physical health. Firstly, let's talk about the damaging effects of continuously agreeing with others. Dr. Gabor Mate, a leading authority on addiction and mental health, wrote in his book, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, that many of us have an intrinsic need to satisfy others, often due to traumatic childhood experiences or a desire to be accepted by others. If we decline someone's request, we may feel guilty or apprehensive, even if it endangers our own well-being. This may ultimately lead to exhaustion, bitterness, and even physical health issues. So why is saying no so crucial? According to Dr. Gabor Mat, the answer lies in authenticity. By putting others' demands before our own, we're not being true to ourselves. We may be trying to prove our worth to others or avoid conflict, but in doing so, we lose touch with our innermost desires and values. This can ultimately lead to a feeling of emptiness and detachment from ourselves. However, saying no isn't just about creating boundaries and protecting our well-being. It can also become a powerful tool for personal growth and recovery. Trauma, as explained by Dr. Gabor Meti, isn't just about the incident itself, but also about how it affected us on a deeper level. If we've internalized beliefs of unworthiness or the need to satisfy others, declining a request can help us challenge those convictions and discover our own sense of self-worth. Saying no politely and assertively is the subtle art of setting boundaries and being considerate of your own needs. It allows us to avoid being overloaded with too many commitments or tasks, which can lead to burnout and stress. Additionally, saying no can also help us avoid toxic or draining relationships that do not serve us. It also helps us build self-respect and confidence. When we say no to something that does not align with our values or beliefs, we are prioritizing our own needs and desires. This helps us develop a stronger sense of self-worth and self-esteem, which can positively impact our personal and professional relationships. Saying no can also free up our time and energy for things that are truly important to us. By saying no to things that are not aligned with our goals and values, we can create more space in our lives for activities and experiences that bring us joy and fulfillment. Of course, uttering the word no may not always be a straightforward process. It may initially feel uncomfortable or even intimidating, especially if we are used to constantly agreeing. However, as Dr. Mate emphasizes, the ability to heal is always within us. We can reconnect with our authentic selves and become whole again, even if it requires time and effort. To stop being too nice and start being more authentic, it's important to prioritize self-improvement and lifelong learning. Learning how to say no without feeling guilty is a crucial step in this process. So, can we break this cycle and learn how to say no politely? First, it's important to recognize that saying no doesn't make us a bad person. It's okay to prioritize our own needs and well-being. In fact, setting boundaries and saying no can actually help us build stronger relationships based on mutual respect and understanding. One way to start saying no is to practice self-reflection. Take some time to think about your priorities, values, and goals. What are the things that truly matter to you? When you have a clear sense of your priorities, it becomes easier to say no to things that don't align with them. 
Another helpful strategy is to practice assertiveness. This means expressing your needs and opinions in a clear and confident manner while still being respectful of others. It takes practice, but the more you assert yourself, the easier it becomes to say no when necessary. It's also important to remember that saying no doesn't always mean shutting people out completely. Instead, try to offer alternative solutions or compromises that work for both parties. For example, if a friend asks you for a favor but you don't have the time or energy, you could suggest another time or recommend someone else who could help them out. Finally, it's important to be kind to yourself throughout this process. Learning to say no can be difficult, and it's okay to make mistakes or slip up from time to time, but it is fundamental for our mental well-being and personal growth. Remember that it's a journey, and every small step towards setting boundaries and prioritizing your own needs is a step towards a healthier, happier you. The next time you are feeling guilty or apprehensive about uttering the word no, remember that you are taking a vital step toward healing and authenticity. If you found this video interesting, hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends so that we can continue creating similar content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more inspiring videos. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Stay curious 